gonna be here forever. Just dripping everywhere. It's messy, it's time consuming, aggravating. I'm sure it'll look really good when we're done though. A knee saver 2000. <laughs> This was a big mistake. Tons of work. No shortage of tools here today. Stop it! You look so depressed! I'm just one down the wall. Hello and welcome to our channel. I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. And we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks. But simple doesn't mean easy. And today we want to talk about the DIY micro cement we decided to do in our custom master bathroom shower. So we're building an off-grid earth sheltered house here in the Adirondacks of New York State and it is a concrete dome. And because of the curved walls, it presents a lot of challenges. Especially in the master bathroom because our shower is against one of those outside curved walls. So we have the curved wall, the curved beam, and a curved floor, which led to a lot of choices or things that we needed to decide as far as how to finish off our master bathroom shower. We couldn't buy just your standard fit in the corner, you know, neo angle shower. Right. We had to do something custom. He's got all the cement board pieces cut for the shower. And then uh, we started thinking about what we would do on the walls. Like as far as tile goes, it would probably be super challenging because of all the curves and all the cuts, cuts. <laughs> and the beam that was there. We would have been cutting little pieces around it and we weren't sure if it was going to look Right. Then we decided we were going to use that vinyl flooring and we were going to do like this waterproof vinyl flooring on the walls. Going vertical, which might have looked pretty cool. We weren't yeah. sure if it was going to stick. We are going to kind of glue it with um, liquid nails. Make a mess of the wall with glue. <laughs> and then we also were worried about it clashing with the floor that we had chosen right. too, right? And I really, really wanted this rustic Adirondack look. We built our own custom sink and I just really wanted the shower to fit in with all that rustic repurposed look so I did research Kathy does a lot of research a lot of research and I watched videos and I read blogs and I found this stuff called micro cement and after looking into it, it actually really sounded like it would be a great idea. I mean, we're using something called quick wool on the interior walls of the dome. There it is, quick wool, quick creek surface bonding cement. I like a little swirl to it. And there it is finished. But we liked the result, the way it came out. It yeah. looked nice. It hit all the imperfections in the concrete. Which is wonderful. So I thought that the micro cement would be something that we could do because we're really crafty people. We do so much DIY. And I thought it would be a great idea. So we decided to do the micro cement. And we are taped and hydraulic cement in the shower. It's messy looking, but it won't look like this after it's all dry. But we use the hydraulic cement where there were big gaping, gaping holes because we're gonna micro cement the entire interior of the shower. And we chose shortcrete. Right. And I ordered it from a Concrete Exchange, two bags of the shortcrete, sure spray, micro cement, and two little bags of the antique white powder mix, which yeah, goes into that. Yeah. 
It sat around for a while before we got up the courage to do it. <laughs> so we finally got to the day that we were gonna do it. <laughs> and it definitely did not go as plans. Are you ready? No. <laughs> I'm nervous. We're nervous. Lot of steps. Yeah. This is SureCrete Sure Spray ST Micro Cement, they call it. And we also have a uh, coloring additive for antique white. So we're going to follow the directions and we're going to mix this up. All right, one gallon of water down. Mud. Oh, we should have masks on. We should. All right, so now we've got respirators on. That seems too liquidy. How are you going to put this on the wall, Kath? That can't go on the wall like that. They said you could add up to two quarts? More. Six quarts. Four to six quarts. Four is the minimum. Okay. Let's go try it. We mixed it according to the directions. It was a very watery mix and uh, it was just too watery. We didn't even stay on the wall. Yeah. That ain't gonna be fun. It just so it runs right off the wall. I'm just gonna try and uh, get as much of it on the wall as I can and then worry about it. Apparently it is a learning curve. I mean, it's barely covering. It's just dripping everywhere. I'm gonna be here forever. Let's see what with the little scraper. Is it getting any thicker? No. There's not a better way here. There is just no better way. I could just scoop the puddle off the floor and use it. Okay, you said to do mine first. Just it making was... sloppy mess of things, and we just could not get it. It was baffling At all, how difficult and yes. unbelievable it was. Followed the directions to a T and the stuff is not getting harder and we put the least amount of water they recommended in. Look at, Look at it the way it's dripping down though. Yeah, what do we call that? What do we call that? A disaster. The shelf technique? It's been almost three hours now. It is still super drippy. The only thing that I think might be different is the bag is now 45 pounds instead of 50 pounds, but they didn't change the directions. Yeah, that's possible. We poured this and mixed it at 3.30 today. And that's what it looks like Look five and a half hours later. I'm going to leave that and see if it hardens up overnight. It's ridiculous. I mean, five and a half hours, this stuff should have set already and it didn't. But wow, that was really hard work, but it looks good. Hardly set up at all but at the end of the day. All so. those people who said it dries so fast, you're going to be adding water to it, be prepared. None of that was true for us. Yeah. Here's the tin that we let sit overnight. It's still. And then it didn't dry for like five days. It's still drying. So the directions do say that it could take significantly, keyword significantly, longer to dry depending on the temperature and the humidity. Well, we are now, <laughs> you can't make this up, at 68 degrees in the dome, that's without heat, and 78% humidity. Significantly affected the drying time for us, for sure. <laughs> so that was the first bag. So what happened with the second bag? We decided to add a lot less water. So today, we're gonna do the second coat, the finished coat and the final coat, and we have to make it smooth. Yeah. We're gonna finalize some uh, sanding or grinding down any leftover high spots. This is the sanding brick that we uh, use to smooth the micro cement. So here's what it looks like. There's gonna be a link in the <laughs> oh, description stop below. It. <laughs> So 
super right, syrupy. Ready? I feel like that's what it should look like. It seemed like the right thing to do. Based on our first bag experience, absolutely. Only, again, it didn't go as planned. Mm. Having a super challenging time with this. I hate this stuff. It just doesn't even go on smooth. You can't get this stuff to be smooth. It just still would not sort of trowel the way you would expect it to. We couldn't get that buttery smooth finish that we were really hoping to get. So out of desperation, I tried that sponge method. So we just used a sponge like we did with the quick wool to smooth it out as much as we could. I didn't see anybody do this in any video anywhere, so whether it's the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do, I don't really know, but it's what worked for us. And that seemed to work. It was a uniform finish, and right. it had like a sand finish. But we ran out. I guess that's it. I got all the wools done. Well, three wools anyway. We're done with all the micro cement we have. We yeah. ran out. Um, maybe because we made it a little thicker to be able to work with it a little bit better. Uh, it didn't really smooth any better though. It was just terrible to work with. I just I yeah. don't understand it. All the cements and things that we've used have never been like this. I gotta order another bag, which is unfortunate, and the bathroom is to be continued. Just a little update on the shower. It's been about three days and it's drying up. It's getting lighter. You can still see there's a couple of spots that look a little darker than others. I don't hate it, but it definitely is not smooth like butter. And you can hear the sand falling off the wall. So we did some more research and we found out how to make it smooth. We have that other bag coming because we didn't finish this wall. Hopefully there'll be enough in that bag so that we can get a smooth finish on everything. I ordered another bag of that and I ordered another bag of the coloring and we had to wait for that to come in. In the meantime, we made a huge mistake. I made this for you this morning. A Knee Saver 2000. <laughs> that is excellent, Rich. <laughs> Chisel action. Yeah. See, look. Yeah. Yeah, we gotta get all that off. I think we should take this all out and get the floor nice and clean before we start again. We had decided to put the pebble tile floor down before the micro cement. In hindsight, that might not have been such a good idea. Anyway, we had taped it off and because we didn't finish and we had that one last wall to do, we left it there. It looked like it would just sort of you know, break free right, right at the corners there where the tape was, but it didn't. It, we had to chip it up and clean up the edge. This was a big mistake. Tons of work. We shouldn't have left it. We should have pulled it up right away. Yeah. But it would have made a mess. It would have made a mess. Like, it's like you can't win. This is what it looks like before. The tape got pushed down underneath. Yes, it did. Ugh. Really bad. It's coming out, but it's not easy. So that was a mistake letting it dry so long before pulling up the tape. But we knew we were going to do another coat. We were just thinking, just leave it because we had more work to do. So definitely clean up right after putting the micro cement down. The mess had hardened so bad, we could barely even get the taped plastic and the tape off the floor. Right. We spent an entire day Chipping. Chiseling, yeah. chipping. You even tried the grinder. Yeah. All right, this is going to be a dusty mess, but hopefully it'll save us a lot of time. The next day we did the last and final coat. So that bag dried uh, completely differently again.
no shortage of tools here today. Yeah, because this is just, here it goes, right? That's what happens, it doesn't smear. Nope, it does, it has to be much wetter. All right, back to the drawing board, let's go add water. I get it, it needs to be a lot more watery because it will have more of it to finish the whole shower. That looks nicer though. You're gonna be a pro by the time you're done, honey. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> and that one decided to start setting up pretty quick, like we everybody were, was saying. Yeah, we were adding water the whole day. All right, we have no idea what's happening, but this one is thickening so fast. We can't even keep up with it. Look at that, I can't even. It's like solid on the bottom. Now it's like what everybody in the videos actually said. I feel like we got bad batches. <laughs> the first two bags. I don't know. How long has it been? It hasn't even been 45 minutes, has it? No. All right, well, we just have to keep adding water to make the mix better. And uh, that seems to be the trick. It's been a little over an hour. Yeah, it's taken way too long for this wall. If it's any consolation, honey, I think you're doing an amazing, amazing uh, job. Not really. Yeah, you are. Don't look too close. <laughs> By adding water, I think we probably affected the color a bit. Um, yeah, we have some spots that are a little darker, some a little lighter. But on a whole, it doesn't look too bad. Mm -hmm. I did try to like burnish it, you know, with a little spritz of water and sort of press hard on the trowel, but it was just too up and down, wavy, looked horrible. So then Kathy Quick grabbed the sponge and made it right. All right, we're coming up on a very rare moment here in the build. We have to approach her uh, quietly as uh, not to disturb her. See, we have Kathy working. Uh -huh. <laughs> Kathy is sponging it as smooth as she can and as evenly as she can. And uh, that's it. We're going to have sort of a rough finish. It's not going to be smooth. It just looks nicer than when you try and make it smooth because when you do get it smooth and, and, and glossy, it looks like lumpy. You could definitely see the unevenness of what it. What they call that? They call that burnishing or yeah. something, right? It just. Yeah, when it's shiny, you can see all the imperfections. We like it better with the sponge uh, finish. How many hours has it been since the last time we talked on the video? So many. Five? Yeah, it's around dinner time now. <laughs> but you can see that we have got some kind of a finish going on here. It's looking pretty good. <laughs> all the sand grains come off. It's been all day. And we finished sponging, well, micro cementing and sponging. Now we're gonna pull, pull off, I can't talk. <laughs> we're gonna pull off all the blue tape and just touch up the edges. Stop it, you look so depressed. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. Yeah. We're done. On a whole, it doesn't look too bad. I'm not disappointed. We finished the micro cement. It's still drying. A little bit more every day. We have some spots that are a little darker than others. It's a little nerve-wracking when you're waiting for it to dry because it really looks splotchy and blotchy. Time while we were waiting, we got the grout on the um, shower floor done. Mm -hmm. And everything looks nice and neat there. And then it was time to use the sealer. Right. <laughs> a lot of fun with that, too. <laughs> to protect the floor, the slate, cubbies, and we're ready to apply the wall sealer. This has to be mixed properly. There is a lot of fumes that are created, so we're going to get all the windows in the house opened. We have the ERV going full blast, and we bought these special attachments for our respirators. Three ounces of A to two ounces of B. Thirty-five ounces of water. And now 
Now this is supposed to cover the entire shower. Yeah, so we mixed it up. It was a very uh, watery solution for the first coat. Yes. The primer coat. And we soaked it into the wall. It's very watery. to work it in. First of all is a challenge because it drips all over the floor. If I just go like this, look. You roll up, it kind of catches it because it's a curved wall. All right, well, do what right. you gotta do, right? And no matter what you do, there's some spots Yeah, you just don't that soak won't it soak in. it in. Wow, I wonder why. Keep going. So we just keep pushing it in to get that primer coat really, really good. So we don't know if it's supposed to look blotchy or if it's supposed to dry dark or lighter or clear. We just don't know. Well, I guess we're going to find out, right? I think we will. <laughs> so yeah, it was really yeah. watery. It got underneath the tape around all the plastic. We ended up just taking that stuff and wiping it across the grout, tile, yeah. floor, and everything. So the tape on the floor didn't work. I don't know if you could see it, but the stuff was able to get through under the tape. So we had to pull the whole flooring up, and we're just going to wipe down the whole floor with a wet rag. This stuff is drying, and it just looks so blotchy. There were areas that wouldn't take, and we just don't understand, but... We're gonna let it dry a little bit, and when it's dry to the touch, we're supposed to be able to do the next coat. After the primer coat, we waited a few hours for that to dry, and then we had to put a first and a second coat on the walls. Right. This is a two to one water to catalyst ratio. We're gonna do seven and a half of A. All right, and now you want five ounces. So, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to 12 and a half. 12 and a half. Still looks like it's gonna go on really, really thin. messy. Yeah. Oh yeah, the bubbles now, big time. Oh, you're gonna have to be methodical because you can't even see where it is. Hmm. Dry to touch. Absolutely. All right. I don't like it. It looks blotchy. The walls look oh, terrible. The walls. I'm looking at the floor. Yeah, but floor look at the fantastic. walls. The walls look absolutely awful. They're worse than they were before we started. I know. I almost feel like they need to dry it for like a week. Well, they do. It takes a whole week for everything to fully dry. But it's time to put the second coat on. So let's Fourth do it. We're almost done with the second coat. We got tons left. I mean, we still have the whole other half a gallon. So that second batch that we mixed is enough for probably three coats. We did not need to mix that much. So 40 ounces the first time soaked in really well. We only had a little bit left. This is 37 and a half ounces of the first coat, which is a two to one and we have enough for three coats. Guys, and we still have almost a half a can you got, yeah. left. We could have made another full batch of that. Yeah, we have plenty to do more if we want to. It was very hard to get it on the wall again, just sort of puddling down. It would just sort of drip down the wall. And then you'd wait, and when it was dry to the touch again, you would do the next you coat. Do it again. All right, we finished the second coat. We're kind of worried because it looks worse than it did before. It's super blotchy and any imperfections that were present are 10 times more prevalent now. It sets up in 24 hours and takes seven days to fully cure. So we don't know what to expect. It looked really blotchy and we were really sitting on the edge of our seats hoping it would dry up 
clear and not look blotchy. And it did. It's done. The it walls is. have a nice sort of a sheen, so it's definitely waterproof and uh, they're smooth to the touch. It it's... definitely has a nice rustic look. Right, and it's sealed, so that's the main goal. We're happy with it. Messy doesn't even begin to describe the disaster it creates. It gets it's everywhere. It's all over the floor, on your feet, on your shoes. Do everything you can to uh, protect all the moldings yes. and everything that you need to protect because it'll just make spots on everything. When we say it's messy, take that and multiply it by 10. It's messy. A tremendous amount of time. Each bag, when you include the cleanup, the prep and then the cleanup, was a complete eight to 10 hour day. And then a full, eight to ten hour day for the sealer. It's it really just, hard to work. We won't be doing this ever again. No. That was a one shot <clears throat> deal. We're happy with the result for the look that we wanted in the bathroom, but it was, there's got to be a better way. Tile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually really happy with the final result. I can live with it. If you're thinking about doing a DIY micro cement shower. It's not as easy as a lot of people make it look. That's right, don't believe all those videos that uh, cut and edit and everything to see. Or the their... blogs where they just show yeah. in pictures and everything looks hunky-dory and yeah. it's great. Oh, and they tell you it's a little messy. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's very messy, very time-consuming, and it's not easy. No. But it does end up looking nice. So stay tuned, a video showing the cost of everything for our custom DIY bathroom is coming soon. And if you're interested in our off-grid earth sheltered house, please hit that like and subscribe and bell and join us. New videos every week. I'm Kathy. And I'm Rich. And we're creating a simpler life in the Adirondacks, but simple doesn't mean easy. See you in the next video. Alright, ready? Ooh, look at that. What? Cracks. Yeah. What cracks? On the wall. What? You see them? Those are cracks? Those are cracks. It makes no sense. Got two problems. We got the water pouring out of the shower. And I don't like those cracks. <laughs>